Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. From the top of the bricks, the top of the hill. On behalf of the board of the directors of the Trinidad and Tobago Transparency Institute, on behalf of the Institute, let me welcome you and thank you for being here to join us for dinner, to contemplate on our vision, and I saw it very prominently there and there as well. And I invite you to walk around and have a look and a read of it. We thank you for your support to the Institute to be here today to purchase the tickets. It's been two years since we've been out. And that two years means that we have not been able to interact with our friends like yourselves, with society, in our town hall meetings, with the media, or in conferences and so as we try to um, impart to the public, as it were, our messages, our, adv our advocacy efforts and so on towards a better Trinidad and Tobago. We have missed it and we have missed you. So we are very happy that we can be with you all here this evening and you with us as well. Let me tell you on, in two words about the Trinidad and Tobago Transparency Institute. We are the local chapter of Transparency International. And TI, <clears throat> as we so fondly call it, is the global civil society organization leading the fight against corruption, promoting transparency, integrity, and good governance. We are one of only three chapters, well, two and a half chapters in the Caribbean, the other being Jamaica, and the other chapter that is in formation at this time is Guyana. At the Institute, our efforts are focused primarily on four areas, and those efforts fall on the backs of our board of directors and our three members of staff. The board of directors are all volunteers to this cause. We have a passion for what we do, like yourselves. We have a vested interest in driving the advocacy, driving the information, driving the efforts to ensure that we have a better Trinidad and Tobago. The first area is in the public sector, and you will no doubt be aware of our many interventions for example, with regard to the public procurement legislation, we are in the final stages, <clears throat> we are told, of the operationalization and implementation of that legislation, and we call for its very early implementation, as we have been doing in the past. As my, what my colleagues would say in the past, former chairs, we have been in the vineyards too long on this. You will know as well our efforts on, advo on the advocacy front with respect, to, with respect to campaign finance legislation. And once again, recently, we have given our contributions to the amendment on, on the representation of the People's Act. We think this is a fundamental plank if we, if we are to move forward in the fight against corruption and the thrust towards good governance in our country. We want this campaign finance legislation under whatever name to get off the ground. We need it like yesterday. Of course, our disappointment with what the status of the whistleblower legislation is well known. On two occasions that we know of, it has made its way into the parliament. And we have had cause to say to some of the players in that field, what else, what else do you need to bring this legislation to fruition? It went in, it went out. We call once again for the reintroduction of the whistleblower legislation into the parliament and its swift passage to an enactment. That's part of our public sector trust. I could go on a lot about it, you know, in terms of our projects and interventions. But the other area that we are focused on is the private sector. And um, traditionally, when you talk about governance and corruption and stuff, all eyes and all hands focus on the public sector. But like in Rio, where it takes two to Samba, or in Trinidad, where it takes two to Soka, or in England, where it takes two to Waltz, it also takes two hands to clap. So the public sector and the private sector, in our view, have a role to play. If we are to curb 
if we have to curb this this phantom, this phenomena that troubles our land. We are pleased to say that uh, our local chapter is one of only 13 chapters in the world of Transparency International chapters that have undertaken a business integrity country agenda. And that is an assessment of the state of best practices in the private sector. And we came up with the report. It was accepted by Transparency. And now we are also pleased to say, with the support of yourselves, and particularly Republic Bank, we hope to get onto another phase of that exercise, sharing the best practices with private sector. I must say we've had good uh, support from uh, members of uh, the private sector and the chambers in getting this project off the ground. So thus far, I've mentioned the public sector, and now I've mentioned the private sector. We are not alone. We have a number of civil society bodies in Trinidad and Tobago. So we have tried to share the message of good governance with our brothers and sisters in civil society. And um, with, with support and funding from the Commonwealth Foundation a few years ago, we were able to craft a toolkit for good governance in civil society. And we have been using that toolkit to share the best practices in civil society. And again, um, those who have supported us in the past, like Atlantic LG and so on, um, through the air initiative, their support, we have been able to share that with small groups, the total watching groups, the cricket clubs, and so on, as we try to share and move that best practice upwards. The next area that we focus on, my voice will drop a little bit, simply because it's on the youth. And today in the newspapers in our land, there's some news there that troubles us all, I believe on the status of our youth. But in our own little way, as I said, we are a body of volunteers, and only with your efforts, your support, can we continue our work. We have been able to start integrity clubs in schools as a project. We've chosen, I think, about seven clubs, seven schools to start those clubs. And we have been liaising um, in the past with the Ministry of Education to see if we can engender that club into the curriculum. What it means simply is that we have encouraged, we have provided the seed, and we have nurtured children in these schools to form what in my days were, were clubs like the 4 H clubs and the superior clubs. Do you all remember those things? It's clubs that were in the school. And we hark back to a time and a day when ethics was part of our curriculum. I remember it was a subject on the timetable. And we think it is high time that we return to those kinds of things would work for some of us. And I'm sure it can work for a lot of our kids. So we have spent time in these four areas of work, public sector, private sector, civil society, and the youth. So we think with those um, efforts, those initiatives, tackling, as it were, four dimensions of, of our life in Trinidad and Tobago, our culture, we think we can somehow influence a change in behaviors. This is my first evening out in two years. Do you all know that? And I think for some of us as well, I'm not wearing a mask because you are very far from me. <laughs> and I want to continue with the social distancing and the mask. This COVID has taken a toll on our lives, our economy, and everything else. Maybe it has given birth to this uh, devil that we call crime that pervades our land at this point in time. Suffice it to say, we hope that this is a new beginning. We hope that with you here and with your support, your continued support, that we will be able to take our country to a place where we want it to be, our lives, the quality of lives that we lead in our communities to a place where we want it to be.